Hello everybody, it's Melinda from Dapperdrache and today I thought I would invite you to come with me to my room because I would like to tell you a story. Now it's not the type of nighttime story we read to our children but I think storytelling is very important and because I'm incredibly fortunate to have a job where I meet many many families and I hear many, many human stories, I decided that every once in a while I'm going to share you a story that I think is either beautiful or we can really learn some, something from it or both. Uh, first of all, if you're new to this channel, welcome. Um, the channel itself is quite new, but I'm lucky enough uh, to be connected to many of you for the past three years since Dapper Dreiger started. And uh, I'm just really happy to finally make these videos because I found myself telling the same stories over and over again to many people, which is great. I can never really get bored with telling good stories, but um, I think it's also lovely that it gets to more people and perhaps we can have a discussion in the comment section below and uh, we could learn a little bit more from each other than if it's only me talking to you and sharing ideas. So let's get going. Today's story is about a couple, obviously, I will tell everything uh, without names. So it's about a couple who visited me uh, because they uh, were adopting a baby and they came for me for baby wearing consultation. And if you wouldn't know, maybe I'm an educator on perinatal care, breastfeeding and baby wearing. So people do come to me for private courses, coaching or uh, consultations. So I'm simply teaching baby wearing. That's one of the things I do here at Dapper Drache. So they came uh, for a baby wearing consultation. And uh, the only thing I knew in advance is that they are going to have a baby who is going to be born soon. And they are going to adopt this baby um, in a few months time. So they would like to come and uh, learn baby wearing from me. Um, now, it's very important to tell that I help anybody. I don't mind if you have a baby, uh, if you will have a baby, if it's your own baby, if it's your grandchild, it doesn't matter. I think baby wearing should be very accessible for everybody and it's very healthy for uh, all babies and everybody who carries the babies. But obviously this was a very special situation because most of my clients, the families who come here would have a baby on their own and uh, very often the babies are already born a few days or a few weeks old when they come here. And so we practice uh, with a system that they are all um, uh, yeah, f uh, either familiar with because they already used it or we figure out something on the spot for that particular baby and the parents. So when someone comes here with the idea that, okay, I will have a baby in about two months of time and it's going to be a newborn baby, uh, that's very special. Also, since I'm teaching attachment psychology, in a case of an adopted child, we are talking about something much more complex than the usual. So when this couple came to visit me, um, it was uh, very clear after a bit of chat that we are going to talk about how baby wearing could support them, not only as a means of transportation, but also how we can support the attachment process with baby wearing, because Think about it, if you have a child whom you are going to adopt, usually this child is first of all going to separate it from his or her mom. That's a very big break in, in a baby's life, no matter how we look at it. Um, I'm not telling you whether adoption is right or whether adoption is wrong. It's absolutely not for me to judge. Uh, I'm here to help you, right? So that's what I do. And I look at it from an absolutely objective perspective. We know that children who are going to be adopted suffer at least one major trauma, but usually it's two. So which means that first is the separation from the mom. And then usually from the mom, they are going to go to foster care to a special family or to a special unit uh, for the first few days or weeks and sometimes even years, right? It depends on what's the situation. And then from that point, they will be picked up by the adoption parents, ideally, because obviously there are many children who will go from foster care to foster care or special 
uh, homes and facilities. Uh, in that case, we are uh, yeah, we can unfortunately count the number of traumas. So that's that's the sad part of the story. But what I said, okay, let's have a look at how skin on you know, skin to skin contact, baby wearing itself can um, heal this child's trauma and give the message to this baby that he is uh, or she is now going to be safe with this new set of parents and how I can make sure that, that these parents are going to feel like the baby is their own, right? Mm -hmm. So what uh, I recommended was uh, obviously uh, to find a wrap, we did found, found a wrap together that was really nice and cozy. I really like a stretchy wrap for this purpose. I don't say that's the only one that's good because it has to feel good for the parents and everything, but a nice stretchy wrap is really, I, I think, carrying a baby in a nice stretchy wrap would come really close to the feeling of having the baby in your belly or to that closeness, to that moving together. It's really calming for the baby, that extra balance that it gives. Um, and uh, it's also really cozy for the, um, the parents. Now, what's interesting is research shows, for example, that the single act of moving with a baby in your arm or obviously in a carrier is going to have a calming effect on a child, on a baby. Uh, it will release more oxytocin in the brain and they are going to feel more relaxed and growth will prosper in their entire body and brain. So it has a very positive calming and uh, growth propelling effect. Um, and just a little interesting bit for you to take away from this story. So here were the parents, we practiced uh, how to uh, wrap the stretchy wrap and um, baby wearing has a very special property that, is, that can boost milk production and obviously um, in case of an adoption child actually I wasn't sure how to approach it so I didn't really want to talk about breastfeeding because I felt that it might be really painful for that couple um, that I talk about breastfeeding whereas um, yeah it's not you know not really possible. I did know, so I'm a lactation consultant in training. I'm coaching people for breastfeeding and stuff like that. And I did know that there is a protocol, there is a sort of um, semi-medical process that would help someone to lactate, to produce milk, even without pregnancy. But um, yeah, I just wanted to skip the entire story of breastfeeding and imagine what happened. Somewhere in the middle of my story, the mom really sort of carefully said, you know, I initiated breastfeeding. I was, oh, okay, that is absolutely fantastic. So I just added, you know, a whole chunk of stuff to the consultation and we discussed, okay, how can we the best um, help breastfeeding with baby wearing in this situation? And uh, it was really, really nice. And if you are now surprised how this whole thing can be done uh, and what the heck am I talking about anyway I just say it again so uh, women who weren't pregnant I don't say that it's true for all women but for quite yeah quite a lot may um, be able to uh, lactate or relactate which means that they might be able to produce milk without pregnancy even if they haven't been pregnant before if they have been pregnant before and if, if they have given breastfeeding then it's even uh, perhaps it's an even easier case but it's something that's possible and imagine an adopted child who's lost um, his or her mom you know and uh, already went through all sorts of traumas the enormous gift you can give with breastfeeding uh, in terms of the bond that you are going to create, in terms of the uh, immunity that you are going to help uh, to build, is absolutely uh, yeah fantastic. It's it's a gift. It really gives back something to that baby that that was lost for him, and um, it's just such an amazing thing to do if you can do it and if it works for you, and it's not too difficult either. So. If you are someone who is thinking about adoption or if you are someone who would like to help someone else breastfeeding because it, it, it is possible, so think about it. In the past, we didn't have bottle feeding as an option. So what people did, they actually breastfed each other as children. And if you think like 
yuck, this is disgusting. Think about it that actually breast milk is not sterile. It has all sorts of good bacteria and uh, all sorts of things that, that are living with us, but it has amazing properties. So it, it kills all bacteria, virus and everything else that that's not good for you it's a really pure thing breast milk so uh, there are donor uh, milk uh, donors that means that people who actually give milk deposit to deposit it to a milk bank and then your baby can get human milk to that bank or if you have a good friend who is lactating and you have a problem with your supply then uh, actually you can exchange milk the baby can actually even latch on to your friend it doesn't matter as long as your you know um friend is healthy and stuff like that it, it doesn't matter and if you are asking milk from a donor uh bank then it's going to be for sure um a fantastic uh, quality milk but obviously the best quality is the one that comes out from the booby because along the way when you pour it into something, store it, reheat it, things are going to die in breast milk. So actually it's not too crazy. So our ancestors simply just used each other to breastfeed the baby together. And if you think about it, how demanding it is on a mom to breastfeed, uh, at least this is what they say. I don't find it too demanding, to be honest, but this is one of the arguments I hear most often. Then think about it, um, the, it was shared within the community. And I tell you, one more, maybe even uh, more interesting fact. So not only you can initiate uh, breastfeeding, even if you haven't been pregnant yet and uh, uh, you just want to, for example, feed an adopted baby. Uh, not only was it normal that in a community people breastfed together, um, each other's babies, but you know what was normal? When someone's daughter got pregnant, uh, the grandmothers, stimulated relactation so the grandmothers started their own milk supply because they were the ones the second uh, in line to be responsible for the baby to be born and uh, that 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 backup is very necessary right so it's amazing but this was just normal imagine that that your mom would relactate and give milk to the baby because even you know 70 80 people 80 years old people actually are able to lactate usually so this is a an enormous knowledge that we just lost because it went out of fashion but it's there and this mother my client uh, was lucky enough to learn about this option to lactate even without pregnancy and um, when they left my office they um, they had a lovely rep they knew how to use it and they had the knowledge how to travel later because they picked up this baby in a in a country far away so uh, we practice okay how can how can we manage everything uh what you know the baby wearing and a little bit the breastfeeding during the flight during the long flight and during all the travels so we made a very um uh, not i would wouldn't say a plan because step by step plans with children uh, are not really a good idea but i gave them many tools to use so that uh, they can feel very confident in every situation that comes their way and it was absolutely amazing so they were so ready they were lovely people they were so ready to have that baby and however said i find that baby can't be with the um with his her parents i think that little that little baby is going to be just really really lucky with my clients because they were so very dedicated to do the very best uh, for this baby so they left my office and um we said yeah we keep in touch but you know i it's lovely many clients of mine do send a picture when they wrap their baby or they have a lovely moment uh, or or you know they they write me a few uh, lines but sometimes they forget so i was wondering what's gonna happen and guess what a few weeks ago i got a message from them that their baby was born and i actually got a picture of the baby and i was so happy that they didn't forget about me and you know for me that's the best compliment like it cannot get better than that than when my clients actually just don't forget about me and send me a picture or a few lines and um so i congratulated them and they said everything is in order and uh, there was a um, 
um, um, few weeks when the mom could have changed her mind and obviously that's a very fragile period and on the one hand you wish maybe she wasn't chain, you know maybe she wasn't gonna adopt uh, this baby uh, or give this baby up for adoption on the other hand of course you want uh, for your clients the best so I was just waiting and then a few days ago I actually got a picture with my clients one picture about the dad baby in the wrap with the dad and one picture about the mom uh, being together with the baby and I asked how it's going and it was going well with breastfeeding still building up the supply but it's going really well baby had uh, uh, a great time latching on and it is really a success story basically from my side I don't forget the mom who gave up this baby and I hope that she's going to think of it as, as the right solution for her somehow. But let's focus on the good thing is that here was a couple. I think I could add something to their story. Um, because um, if you would like to adopt a baby and I don't even uh, tell what nationality um, or... Um, uh, yeah, I, I just don't want to tell anything more about my clients, but very often when you would like to adopt a baby, you're required to take courses on attachment, so you understand the kind of traumas a baby is going to go through. And so these, this couple had a very good base knowledge, but I could still add to that, which was great. And we could really bring it together in practical terms. Okay, so this is the, the knowledge we have and how can we make sure that on a day-to-day -day practical basis with baby bearing, breastfeeding and our other practices, we can give the most uh, for the baby as well as the, the best parenting experience for the parents. And when I saw the pictures, you know, family actually walking in the woods and baby in the carrier and that love and and just the messages that breastfeeding is going well guys that it cannot get much better than that um i was just so very happy to help them and be part of their experience so what can we take away from this story um Firstly, that it is possible to lactate, to, to initiate uh, milk production, even if you haven't been pregnant. It's not true for everybody, but for many people. Uh, for that, there is a whole protocol. And if you are interested in that, um, leave a comment uh, in, uh, below and uh, I will maybe look for that in, in your country who could help you because there are specialists who can help you with that and also special mother groups. I don't know all of them, but I know a few. So um, if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. Um, and uh, secondly, that baby wearing can really help to create that bond. So even if your own child is born, Sometimes you have a rough time connecting because of a traumatic birth giving or because of whatever reason, you know, it's not always self-explanatory that you have that immediate bond with the baby when, when baby's outside, goes for the fathers too. And baby wearing, just that this closeness, this being together, is moving about together, as I said, it really does magic. So our brain is actually sometimes more, much more simple than you think. Sometimes just doing these very human, very instinctive things can really help you to nail bonding or, um, or, or even heal your traumas. And the third thing is that we can take away with this that breastfeeding uh, is very well, it goes very well with baby wearing and baby wearing can really well um, help breastfeeding through this closeness, it will stimulate your milk supply and stuff like that. Um, if you are interested in, uh, in any part of this explanation, please leave a comment below. That will also help me to make my next video. Um, but I really wanted to share this story with you and uh, highlight these three aspects. And I hope that you enjoyed it. And I promise that I'll come back to you with more stories because I do meet amazing people and I hear really lovely stories and I just want to share it with you. Okay, so uh, don't forget to subscribe if you would like to hear more from me and click the little bell so you actually know when I put out some content. And uh, if you are interested in what I'm doing, visit my website. I put everything in the description box below. Have a lovely day and see you next time. Bye bye.